Arun Desai and with another daily DB episode. I'm excited for this episode. Actually, one special thing today is like I am inside the office and currently the time is 6 a.m. So it's like I mean I'm feeling different like being in office like I'm I'm the first one to enter the office. I'm just enjoying it. Like I'm loving it. Now, uh, like all the cleaning staff and everyone is coming into the office, that's okay. With the great energy that I have, I guess we should start our show, uh, like the daily DBA show. All right, guys, so a couple of you sent me an email stating like they like to read and they were asking me, do we have ebooks? Yes, there are a lot of ebooks that we have already published from DBA Genesis. And you all can check those ebooks on Amazon. You can buy a Kindle version or you can go for a paperback. And paperback is the normal printed book that we have, right? So you get the printed book couriered to your house. Now, uh, all the people who like to read the books, like I'm a fan of reading books. Like if I'm given a choice between video and reading, I would choose reading. I mean, that's how I am. And I believe like there might be definitely so many other DBAs who love to read. And if you are one of them, definitely you can go ahead and check the DBA Genesis books. I think we have placed all the books into one location. If you go to support.dbagenesis.com and on the top uh, corner, you will find DBA books. And if you click that, you will get all the list of books that we have published in the past. That being said, I guess we should start our today's episode with the first question of the day what would you recommend as a dba either to use sql profiles by sql tuning set or fixing plan by using sql plan management i guess guys i think in the previous episode i already mentioned this i am fan of sql profiles because sql profiles stores additional statistics related to your database objects now those additional statistics along with the database level statistics allows optimizer to generate an optimal plan so the deciding authority is still the database optimizer right so the beauty about sql profiles and that's what i love it is giving additional statistics for optimizer to generate an accurate plan so at any given point of time if i would have to recommend you so first of all you implement the sql profiles that's the best stuff now regarding the SQL plan management, what I would say is like until unless you are sure that the baseline plan that you have is the best plan that can ever be generated, then only go for SQL plan management. All right. So that being said, let's move on to the next question. Why we put database in mount restrict mode before dropping the database? Amazing question, but think it like this. I mean, it's not at all an amazing question, by the way. Sorry. So think in this way you want to uh, drop or completely destroy a building so don't you think you will ask people to get out of the building right it's so simple like you want to drop a database and you still want users to be inside the database makes no sense right so i guess you know the answer so you have to restrict the users before dropping the database you have to stop people going into the building before you even plan to blast the building right so let's move on to the next question can you explain SQL Tuning Advisor how to run and how to analyze it? To analyze it, I think we need a completely separate session, but for SQL Tuning Advisor, I guess we have a great article. I would link that article somewhere below this video, so you can go ahead and check that article as to how to run the SQL Tuning Advisor. I think it's an amazing tool, but most of the time, guys, like now I'm getting so many emails, I see that SQL Tuning Advisor is not able to generate some great deals of advice, but when I work with the DBAs and try to help them with the SQL tuning advisor, the advisor says no advisor available. But when we work on the database performance tuning, we see a, a tremendous growth on the performance tuning side. Like we see queries running much faster with the traditional way of simplifying, okay, traditional way of trying to fix the performance tuning problem. So, I mean, you can't 100% depend on the SQL tuning advisor. If you are just looking for how to run the SQL tuning advisor, I can definitely put the link somewhere below this video where you can go ahead and I think it should be available on our support.dbgenesis.com website. That being said, let's move on to the next question. 
Difference between integrated capture and classic capture in Golden Gate. In integrated capture, do we need to create logminer database in source database or Oracle uses logminer mechanism? I guess for the last part of the question, like in integrated capture, do we need to create logminer database? No. In source database or Oracle uses logminer mechanism? Yes, Oracle uses the, the logminer mechanism. But you can have a separate database also, but I think that will be a little complex uh, configuration. But for you, I guess this is the best one. Like when you are trying to use integrated capture, the log mining service will be activated on the source database. That's the second part answer. Let's come to the first part. So difference between integrated capture and classic capture. Classic capture, let's keep it dead simple because I know you need to study more in order to understand the difference. Classic capture will capture the transactions from your archive box. But when it comes to integrated capture, the beauty is like it will capture the transactions from the memory of the database. So whatever transactions you have in the redo log buffer cache, it will start capturing from there. So that's the beauty. Like uh, now you might have this question like why do we have something like this? Like what's the importance? Assume this. So if the capture is happening from the archive log files and there is a transaction like when archive logs are generated when the redo log gets full so if transactions are slow and a user has already committed one transaction but other transactions are not going inside the database so the archive will not be generated right so if the archive is not generated it's hard for the target server to receive that transaction so that's the problem with the classic capture but when we have integrated capture whatever transactions are getting committed they are constantly being replicated or sent on to the target system remember this integrated capture is only available currently with the oracle database it's not available with the other vendors of the database so if you are using other vendor source databases and you are using golden gate to extract then you have to go with the classic capture only right so I guess you get the answer and I think so. We have a video on our YouTube channel which discusses the difference between the integrated capture and the classic capture. I'll make sure if the video is not available, I'll try to publish the video for you. That being said, let's move on to the last question, I guess. What is virtual IP or high availability IP and how it is different from normal IP? Hmm. Amazing question. I am actually looking for something to explain you in a better way, right? So, okay, I don't have anything. So let me try this. Guys, when you assign an IP address, right? Now I'm connected to my LAN wirelessly. This is my laptop. So what happens internally? Like when I'm connected to Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi will dynamically assign an IP address to my system, like all the systems in our office, right? So an IP address that is assigned to one device cannot be assigned to other device. That is the problem or that's how the normal or the physical IP addresses work. But when it comes to virtual IP, so assume like, uh, all right, so I have two objects. I'll just try to see what can we do. So assume this is node one of the databases. I mean, this is node one, this is node two, right? So we have physical addresses assigned to these nodes. The biggest problem with physical IP address is it is actually attached to a physical device, right? So if we assign an IP address for this node and this node, these are actually attached to these physical servers. All right. Now, when it comes to a virtual IP, virtual IP is not attached to a physical device. Like virtual IP will run above these nodes. Now, the beauty about virtual IP is if this node goes down, so the virtual IP can fail over or move to another live node in a cluster. So let's take if node one goes down, right? So the virtual IP, not the physical IP, you cannot transfer the physical IP, right? Technically you can, but if you want to have that failover mechanism or high availability mechanism, then you have to go with virtual IP, right? So this virtual IP can be moved to another system. 
So this second node definitely it will have its own virtual IP and it will also have the failover virtual IP. Okay. So now you have scan that is scan listener which is running on the top. So what happens is okay. I mean, I want to go back to the scan concept and then I'll come and explain the virtual IP. So scan, how scan works, we have already seen in our previous episode. So you have a scan uh, listener whenever user connection comes. So the scan listener will, will try to resolve the least loaded node. Okay, let's assume the first node is the least loaded node. So scan will transfer the connection to this node, right? Very simple. Now when another connection is coming, let's take this is the least loaded node, scan will send the connection to this one. Now the third connection is about to come, okay, third connection is coming, this node goes down, this virtual IP is assigned to this node, okay, the second node, second light node. Now the scan IP says that the least loaded node is the first node, which is down, right. So the scan IP will resolve to the virtual IP of the node 1, but the node 1 virtual IP is currently running on node 2. So ultimately the connection will land onto the node 2. This is the concept of virtual IP. The beauty about virtual IP is it is not physically assigned or attached to any device in your network or in your infrastructure. It is a floating IP. Okay, so it can float from one system to another system and it can still accept the connections. So guys, for all the experienced DBAs, like if you want to master virtual IP, okay, assume this virtual IP is not a new concept that is invented by Oracle Rack. Virtual IP was existing even before Oracle Rack came into picture, right? So I want to give a challenge to all the DBAs, all the experienced DBAs who are curious about Oracle Rack, who are learning Oracle Rack. This is a challenge for all of you. Try to read about Linux Keep Alive. Okay, I'll repeat, Linux Keep Alive. I'm not going to say what exactly it is, but I will give you a hint. Linux Keep Alive is the way or it is one thing that CRS uses in order to manage the BIPs. Okay, so that's a hint. So if you read about Linux Keep Alive, that's when you will understand about the VIPs, how VIPs work and you will also understand how the Oracle CRS uses the Keep Alive. So I am giving you two challenges. First is read about Linux Keep Alive. The second is how CRS uses Linux Keep Alive. And because of the Keep Alive, I mean that's how the VIPs are managed on Linux systems. So what it is, how it works. It's a DBA challenge. I want everyone to read about it. Comment below these videos. I will see you all in the comments regarding the Linux Keep Alive. All right, guys. So that being said, I guess it's time to move on. And I would like all of you to send me email regarding your doubts or queries to support support.dbgenesis.com. And as I always say, we have to build the biggest DBA community. And by the way, guys, before I forget, like in one of the previous sessions, I learned from you guys like uh, I was not aware that if password file gets corrupted onto the standby it creates a problem in this thing and I guess I have got a lot of uh, responses in the comments saying like uh, I mean if the password file is corrupted there will be a problem in the data.sync so guys this is what I believe it's not about like I am the expert we have to build a community where everyone is an oracle expert it's not about me being an expert or it's not about anyone being the authority we all have to become the expert so having my vision in mind please help me reach all the dbas across the world we have to get as many dbas as possible on our platform so that we all learn together and bang into the dba world 